When you need help or advice, you turn to your parents or a trusted friend for help. So why go outside of Virginia, your home, when you need car insurance? Able Insurance gives you individual attention and won't turn your way no matter what your driving record looks like. Giving same-day personal service in the state of Virginia for over 30 years. Able Insurance, 979-0814 is the number. Ableinsurance.com is the site. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, do? Welcome to the Ball Hawk Show podcast. I'm your host, Amal Hawkins. Appreciate you rocking with me on this Friday, July 12th, as we discuss Russell Westbrook traded to the Houston Rockets for CP3 and, and a plethora of first round picks and swaps and things of that nature. Before we get started, shout out to the sponsors, Abra Insurance and also Connor Murray Realty. Make sure you check the description to find out their contact information because it's not going to be a long podcast. So let's jump right into it. Shout out to everybody that's streaming with me on Facebook Live right now. The phone lines aren't open. This is, isn't a live recording, but this is a recording in which I'm going to use Facebook Live because I know a lot of people got questions. I've been getting, very, been getting various emails since this trade took place yesterday. But I was binge watching Stranger Things with the wife and I had the phone in the drawer. So I didn't see all the, all the communications until this morning. So I'm going to knock two birds out with one stone. So here we go. The trade was made, people. And I'm seeing a lot of people asking questions right now. So let's talk about it. What you think about Harden and Russ pairing? CP3 might get moved to the Heat. And do you think OKC keeps CP3 or buy him out? All right. So all these questions are all at once. So first of all, we can address CP3. All right. CP3 is is 34 years old. Um, He's due a lot of money. He's diminutive. And as far as a buyout, I doubt it. Um, he is owed a lot of money. Let me check out something that I had pulled up. So Paul signed a four-year deal with the Rockets last season worth $159.7 million that has a team on the hook for a whopping $38.5 million for next season and $41.3 million the seasons afterwards and finally $44.2 million at the age of 36. So... They owe him a lot of dig on money. I don't know what the buyout situation is, um, but you be a damn fool. I don't know. I like. I don't know the situation. I don't know how much it costs to buy him out. But he's due a lot of damn money. As far as trying to trade Chris Paul, who in their right mind? Because Chris Paul is not box office. Chris Paul isn't going to generate a lot of revenue for your organization. As far as people wanted to come see him. Um, as far as Houston, you did the 100% correct thing. You got a guy that's owed a lot of money. You got a guy that has been injured that you couldn't count on when the going got tough. And to top it off, he got into it with your franchise player, James Harden. So what do you do? You pay attention to the waiver wire. You see that Paul George moved from OKC. You see that Russell Westbrook and his team met with management and they wanted to move. And you see that Westbrook is due a lot of money. And you're saying to yourself, the Golden State Warriors aren't the favorite anymore. That imploded. All these other teams are making moves. We saw what the Clippers did. We, we of course, know what the Lakers did. We saw what Brooklyn did with KD and Kyrie. And it's one of the things where James Harden and uh, Russell Westbrook are good friends. They grew up with each other. Harden put the plug out there like, yo, I wouldn't mind taking on Russell. When you look at Russell Westbrook, since Kevin Durant has left OKC, he has not missed a single game. Not missed a single game. I'm going to say that one more time. When you compare Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook has not missed a single game. Chris Paul, on the other hand, has played 50 to 55 games each season, and then he has some type of injury in the playoffs to where it hurt him or he missed some games. So it's hard to compete when you look at Russell Westbrook at this point of his career is more explosive than Chris Paul. Is Does he have basketball IQ like Chris Paul? Absolutely not. 
But for what Houston likes to do, spread you out, shoot threes, or drive to the bucket. So you're going to lose some shooting ability with Russell Westbrook. But what will you gain? You will gain a player who can break down his defender one-on-one. You gain athleticism and explosiveness. You gain increased speed. You gain a better threat on the pick and roll as far as getting to the cup. And you also gain a guy that will allow James Harden to play less minute, allow James Harden to have spot-up threes, unlike these other guys like a Steph Curry and a Damian Lillard. James Harden has never had the luxury of allowing others to create and earning a spot-up three. Anytime James Harden is taking a three, it's off the dribble, and he's work, he's doing it himself. If you look at the uses rate, we're talking about two of the higher, two of the guys who's been number one as far as uses rates in the NBA in the past five years. If you go back to 2014, Russell Westbrook led the league in uses rates. And then the next year, DeMarcus Cousins, the year after that, Russell Westbrook actually set a record when his uses rate was 41.6%. But then James Harden this year was threatening to break that, and he was stuck on 40.4, and that's because Chris Paul missed some games. So we're talking about two of the players that had the highest uses rate in the NBA, and that's predicated off how their team was built. When you look at Russell Westbrook since uh, Paul George has been his teammate, he went from number one to number 10. He deferred to... Paul George so both guys show that they can defer um it's still going to be some adjusting it's not like when they were young and when they went to the finals and when James Harden went in everybody all I will I I do want to say this everybody has always been saying that you put Russell Westbrook at the two then you got a whole better player you you got a better player because he's really a two playing the one so maybe this is the blessing for the skies for Russell Westbrook um Shakur said Harden would get mad whenever CP3 would initiate the offense. You know, and 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 look, that's probably true, but it's a little different when you request somebody to play on a team with you. It's a little different when the relationship is there. When the relationship piece is there, you see things differently. You allow things to go. Like, if you got a good relationship with somebody and they hold you accountable, you're more receptive versus if it's just some Rudy poop. Like, CP3 is one of those guys that, in this day and age, we look at accomplishments. And CP3 with James Harden, even though CP3 could be telling him the truth, James Harden looking at him like, fool, I done been to a finals. Like, what the hell can you tell me? That's what it seemed like when CP3 was trying to coach him up and when they got in that spat, when um, James Harden smacked his uh, fist pump out of his face. It just seemed like that James Harden was just tired of him talking. He was like, dude come to think of it I didn't achieve more than you have even though you know CP3 is an all-time great a first ballot hall of fame and blah 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 blah. but when when we compare the two guys I think this is a great move for Houston it's a great move for OKC um since draft since the draft night OKC has received eight first round picks I'll say that again since the draft night they received eight first round picks OKC, you are in rebuilding mode. So what? You get stuck with CP3 salary. You got eight picks. Eight of them things. I don't know what's going to happen with CP3. Everybody keeps saying buyout. I need to do some more research and to see how much the buyout would truly cost them. And for all y'all folks just saying CP3 is just go right to the Lakers. Can we stop with this tomfoolery, man? How many goddamn old washed up names the Lakers going to inherit? Like, what are we doing? Are we going back to the Lakers when they got GP and got them old ass Carl Malone and they got to the finals just so Kobe could shoot them out the finals versus Detroit? Like, are, are, that's what the Lakers doing? Everybody keep wanting to put all these old dudes on the goddamn going L.A. Lakers. Like, come on, man. The Lakers don't want no damn CP3. They got old. They got enough old beat up machines over there with used up parts. But back to Houston and and uh, Westbrook. A lot of people saying, "Well, ball hawk, Harden and Westbrook turn the ball over a lot." They do. 
Harden led the league in turnovers last year with 387. The year before that, Westbrook led the league in turnovers with 381. The year before that, Harden led the league with 464 turnovers. The year before that, Harden led the league 374 turnovers. The year before that, Harden led the league 321 turnovers. The year before that, it was John Wall. Then it was James Harden again. Then it was John Wall. Then it was Westbrook. But while we're talking about James Harden was number one, who was number two? Westbrook was number two last year. The year before that, LeBron James was number two. The year before that, Westbrook was number two. Westbrook was number two. Wall was number two. Curry was number two. So we got guys that's in the top two in turnovers and usage teaming up. But then when you look at assists, Westbrook led with assists. Harden was number five. The year before that, Westbrook was number one in assists. Harden was number four. 2016, 2017, Harden was number one in assists. Westbrook was number two. They've been top five and top six every year the past Every year I done said about turnover. So you got guys. So so which stat is misleading? Which stat is legit? Because you could play both ends of the spectrum. You could say, yeah, they turn over the turn the ball over the lot, but yeah, they got a lot of assists. To buy him out, they will have to pay him that $120 million. Sometimes a buyout is a percentage of what's owed too. Who's gonna and I'm and I keep seeing people saying Pete. They're just going to trade Westbrook. I mean, trade CP3. Who the hell is going to trade for CP3? What are you going to, like, are you going to trade CP3 and some draft picks for, for like, who in their right mind would give up a young asset for an old-ass CP3 is what I want to know. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, that's why I'm confused. Do Are people just throwing that scenario out there? Or do people truly believe that CP3 can be traded? Like, who, why? What? Like, what are we doing? Like, can you imagine OKC call you like, yeah, man, we want to offer you some first-round picks and CP3 for, like, am I just giving up some Rudy Poop candy asses? Like, are you just dumping him on me? Because you're going to have to give me about three first-round picks to take on CP3 salary. Seriously. Like, that, that everybody understands that that's a loss for you. Nobody's making the playoffs just because CP3 is added to. Like, he, to me, he to, here's the thing. This is the year where you're competing for a championship. This is the year you're not competing just to get to the playoffs. This is championship or bust for anybody making a move this year because it's wide open. Like for Houston, it's championship or bust. Your door is wide open now. Like, you went from only, only Golden State could beat you and you don't need to make no moves, don't panic, to, all right, you upgraded now. You need Clint Capella to get back to Clint Capella for two years. Aaron Gordon's still there. You added Austin Rivers, who's capable of hitting the open shot. You still got P.J. Tucker, a 3 and D guy. Like, Houston got the parts to compete. They have a dynamic duo. If y'all haven't been paying attention, it's, 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 the, it's the year of dynamic duos now. Ain't trios. It ain't super teams. It's duos. Can your duo get you through? I'm not, look, I'm sorry. CP3 ain't going to win me a championship on, on any team. He's not going to help. He's not going to help. Like I said, this isn't the, isn't the year of competing. You know what I'm saying? They are both ball-dominant players, so I can live with some of those turnovers. I, per, I personally think it's going to work. They both want to play with each other, like you said. That is scary. And, and that's another thing. It doesn't bother me either that those guys had a lot of turnovers because, like my man Bert said, when you're high usage rate and you, you're asked to, asked to be ball dominant, there's going to be turnovers that's coming with that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I should have factored in the, the, the turnover to assist ratio. Uh, but when you see a name like LeBron James in the top five and don't nobody ever say – nobody nobody beats when LeBron James has a lot of turnovers because you like LeBron. You know what I'm saying? So when I just read to you that LeBron James was top three before in turnovers, nobody has an issue with that because he's LeBron James because we know the result. I mean, 2017, 2018, LeBron has 700. Oh, no, no, that's assists. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me see uh, turnovers right quick. Yeah, 
So when Westbrook had 381 turnovers, LeBron James had 347. And they both played all 82 games the year before last. Not this past season, the year before last. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I like what's going on. I like the move that Houston made. Because to me, they were always one healthy player away. They are, They were just one healthy player away. It just seems like when they got into the playoffs, CP3 body was breaking down and James was tired. Russell Westbrook allows James to play less minutes and provides that healthy body at that point in the season. Who keeps talking? Maybe I need to I need to mute that. Y'all can still hear me, right? If I mute it. Yeah, well, y'all, yeah, y'all can still hear me. CP3 with big man work, work really well. Harden MVP. Paul George showed you you can still be up for MVP with Russell Westbrook. Besides, what's going to happen? But that can. I mean, we 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 just can't really make that assumption that. Um. Yeah, CP3 definitely can still shoot, but it's a huge issue. And for the way that Dan and Tony wanted to play, it was he really don't want mid-range shots. He wants you to go to the cup, and he wants you to shoot threes. And, and what, what defenders and get to the cup anymore. The blow by isn't there anymore, and that's the one thing. The catch and shoot, PJ Tucker catch and shoot, Aaron Gordon catch and shoot. If you look at Houston, had to create the only dude that James Harden could catch and shoot off of was Aaron Gordon, and we all know Aaron. I, I think this can work, but you 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 just have to, you know, take the take the growing pace. ISO is not going to win a championship. Let's see. So as of right now, ISO hasn't won. So we can say yes as of right now, ISO and I don't think Houston's Houston's offense hasn't been the question. It's been getting stopped. Offense that scares the hell out of Golden State. It's the one offense that gives Golden State the most. One team that consistently had the best team on his heels and and it took a special caliber of team to beat them. CP3 can't stick. Kawhi did. Kawhi did what? Dan and Tony. One, I yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. I yeah, hey, one ISO went Van Fleet just one, just high screen and roll ISO. That's what to so they got a point right there. No, no, we we we're giving you that, Shakur. Move the fits and said, but they played defense because we all know that's why I said the, the offense was so ice. You can win with ISO ball, and in, in, you can win with any offense as long as you get stops. It's, it's no stops, no matter what you do, you got to get stops. 
Just get one more stop, then you're one more stop or make one more play than your opponent. That's all you got to do. You have to make in order to win. And Houston likes to run high pick and roll. I mean, Houston loved to run high pick and roll. Um, Russell Westbrook. Pick and roll. The one thing that I like now is that Dan and Tony's offense makes the point. And for that weak corner three, you remember when Steve Nash used to work with Amar Stoudemire, he would go to the cup. Johnson in the weak side corner, the same we were seeing even with James Harden, he would kick it to P.J. Tucker. His offense will take away the weaknesses of Westbrook as far as his ill-advised shots. It will make him, like I said, it takes the ball out of uh, James Harden's hands more during the season, which he can be fresh. Harden would dribble, 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 take Core, and that's a great point because I think that's a misconception with James Harden. When James Harden has options, I'm saying with James Harden has guys that are truly threats. Only time you would see James Harden, if y'all notice it. And and the thing about it is, Dan and Tony in, will encourage him. Irving. It's still tough on your defense because the lane is wide open. You gotta like you 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 gotta do something. So yeah. as parent, are we gonna sit up here and act like LeBron James don't stand at the top of the key, dribble, 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 and wipe his hands on the front of his jersey a lot? Like he don't step back and be doing this. Y'all can see me on camera. The people on the list of the podcast can't see me. But can we act like LeBron James don't do that a lot? Where he get a switch on the big and he back up and he be doing this and dribble between his legs. So, um, but yeah, nobody's gonna believe in Dana Tony's style until he won a championship. Nobody believed in Coach Tony Bennett's style until he won a championship. People don't believe in something until it's successful as far as mainstream. Like I said, I believe in Dan Antonio's system enough to where we know the one team that won 73 games, the one team that everybody was gunning to beat, they were the one team that was always right there to where we knew that they had. But as Golden State, the one team that they didn't want to see, it was that damn Dan Antonio team. You feel me? Thirty years old versus CP3, who's thirty-four years old. You also inherit a guy who shot twenty threes a game last year in Westbrook. Westbrook, you can't take a bunch of threes. He's never been a good three-point shooter. He's always been trash can juice from three. His best three-point percentage. that no reason Westbrook should take more than two three-pointers a game. That's the cap. Two three-pointers a game, and that's it. That's it. That's his average. Because that three-point shot is broken. Don't take it. I mean, it'll be a night here and there that Russell Westbrook will get a triple-double, but there is no need for Russ to have the average of triple-double. And I think that's a great question because a lot of people are going to say, oh, Westbrook ain't averaging triple-double. Better team, better offensive options. He's playing with the best team.
This is the best teammate James Harden has ever had with the Houston Rockets. There. Westbrook knew how to coexist with KD. He did. For all the folks who think F, but we're not gonna act like they 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 couldn't they coexisted. They did. You know? The one thing I like about Houston is they realized that they were the one team. And I thought they were trying to panic when they were talking about Capella was up for the trade bait. Now, just trading CP3 again. At better. They improved. Overall, they improved. Yeah, you could dare. Yes, you can dare Russell Westbrook to shoot. You can. knockdown shooter than PG was so offensively whole better defender he's not even close but you got PJ Tucker and Capella waiting at um, as far as the west the west is wide open of course the Denver Nuggets still the best Day one, they're going to be the best team in the West because the chemistry is there. It's not going to take growing. Differences and understanding who to play here and, and who fits better here. So Denver. I don't know who out the, out the, out the Denver. I don't know who you could put. Would you put the Clippers? The Clippers I had an upper hand. I don't know how Kawhi and PG gonna mesh well together. I don't know. He could dominate the ball playing the PG. He could facilitate well with AD. That's a given. We know they don't well with LeBron James. That's an easy fix. It's easy to just fix like. You got a wing guy and a big. It's easy for them two to mesh. A big that can step out and shoot. With a wing who love to love to paint, don't want somebody on the block. They gonna everybody's interested to see how Utah is gonna mesh with Mike Conley teaming up with. Who am I? Oh, Dallas. How the unicorn gonna mesh well with Luca? Talked about Houston. What is Sacramento gonna do? Uh, uh, Gino Dalinari is not. Gallinari is not a not a chump. You still. pieces you, i don't know i mean it's wild this is what y'all wanted this is what the people wanted this is what the people wanted right it's parody buy your nba ticket whatever it is and watch all the games what to the east and be excited because you don't know what's gonna happen is this the year the grief free? What are going to do now without Kawhi? What the 76 is going to do now? They got Horford and what is Ben Simmons going to do? What is Detroit going to do? Are they going to make any moves? Because everybody thought that Westbrook was going to end up being And, and have a PG, even though uh, Dragic is still there, I believe, in Miami.
It's a lot of narratives. It's a lot of headlines now. It's a lot of intrigue for the NBA. The NFL training camp starts. So I'm loving what the NBA is doing. If you're a fan of the NBA, you're loving it. It is wide open. Steph is going to have to demonstrate if he's just more than just the best shooter we've ever seen. Now, or, or was Steph just a supplemental player this entire time? Now, Steph is getting the pressure of a true superstar. Steph. Even after his first MVP, even after this unanimous MVP, he never got the vitriol. to be under a microscope how good of a superstar Steph Curry truly is. Because that's now a dynamic duo. The hell that got traded to them. We talk about D. Hello. D'Angelo Russell. Court ain't going to do is play good on ball defense. But defense is overrated. What the hell is the White Howard going to end up at? Can we? I mean, yo, didn't want the White. You got Javale McGee. You don't want to talk about no damn. Twelve right there. Y'all gonna stop disrespecting Dwight Howard because he had a butt injury in the in chocolate. City. Real disrespectful for Dwight. Hey yo, Houston, if Dwight cheat, go get him. Dwight Howard still gets you ten to twelve rebounds a night. Play, play with it. Pause. Maybe I shouldn't say play with it in Dwight because y'all got too many jokes. But that's my guy. And people saying no. That's how you know folks is emotional. There is... What, I don't know why people be disrespecting Dwight Howard, man. People say... Washington. But before that, was the White Howard really washed? If you could say the White Howard was washed with a straight face before I read his his stat line that season before his butt injury, you're gonna drink some shut the hell up juice. That's how I know emotions come. A dude that's averaging 16 and 12 with if that's washed, I'll take it. If I could get a big with Kimball, if that's washed, then I don't know what I don't know what y'all want, man. Let's just keep it a stack. Let's just keep it a stack. Last year, the White got hurt. Last year, the White played nine games. He played nine games. season before he came to Washington so we're gonna say he watched but his last full season 16 and 12 the season before that with the 12 boys in less than 30 minutes a game talk to me people Al Horford had one season averaging 10 boards. Emotions. Want to be respected. Take emotions out of it. If you want to be Skip Bayless. And Dude, don't get me wrong. You'll make a lot of money. And you may not want to be respected. 
you just be put in a lane. But you can't say the white is washed. There is no way. And I ain't on my podcast right now, but I, you, you, you folks got to chill out, bro. But back to Westbrook. I think it's a good move for Houston. They upgraded. They upgraded. As far as what they wanted from their number two ball handler. We got to understand this. Westbrook has, and I think Westbrook knows this. Westbrook, you are number two. And I think Westbrook understands that he can't win a championship being the number one option. I think Westbrook has also demonstrated playing alongside Paul George that he will concede the shots. I think Westbrook wants to be a full-fledged one and he wants to just Probably 18 points. Probably nine rebounds. 18 points. Seven and a half assists. And like nine rebounds. Like I told folks, in this day and age of basketball, you want your ball handlers to actually retrieve the You could feel right into the lanes. You remember back you remember basketball? When you ever did the the and the you know, you go to the middle and the next guy you pass the ball, they go to the middle. You ever notice that the point guard would usually get the wings on the on the outside. And that's what Westbrook does. So all the people always says, you know, they allow Westbrook to get rebounds, they allow him to As allowing your best ball handling to initiate the break. That's why when you got to do like LeBron James. Um, bigger guys that get that can get rebounds and for the Bulls, you get immediately into the break because they're one of your best ball handlers that just got. Come down with the rebound. So that's why when folks used to always say Westbrook is padding the stats with a defense into these talking heads and you want some barber talk shit talking. That's it, in my opinion. Offensive rebounds gonna be there too with Harden. Westbrook average twenty is because of Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon is a guy that flirts around, if I'm not mistaken, averaging like 16 to 17 off the bench. Let me see right quick. And I think that's why um, Westbrook may may average like 18. Let me see. Average Eric, not Aaron, but Eric Gordon averaged 16 last year. Um, CP3 still averaged 15 last year. Then you had Clint Capella. He averaged six. CP missed 20-something games. Um, it was like 20 to 21. He might still average 20 to 21 because you see, I would I would think James Harden scoring would come down, son, because. He may still average 20. You're right. You're right, Jeff. He'll probably still average 20 to 21. You're right. I could definitely see that. Because last year, Westbrook averaged 22.9 with PG. He won. I mean, 22, 10, and 11. He played 73 of the 82 games. him out for rest because I don't remember him getting injured but one yeah shout out to Dame Lillard man you know Dame Lillard you know he had 
so because Westbrook was talking that trash can juice, and anytime you're talking trash can juice, um, you, you, you and that's what he did. He caught these hands from Damian Lillard. But um, EP3. Um. Here, here's the thing. I feel like the le like the more jumpers you could take away from that offense, around the around the rim, I think works better, in my opinion. I don't know. I never thought of it like that. Do they need an additional shooter with the addition of? That a threat to the rim actually benefit them more. And maybe this is my, you know, favoritism towards Westbrook talking more. I admit, you know, like I ride with Um. Yeah, like Darian said, how much more shooting do you need? I mean, they got I mean, P.J. Tucker give you the corner three. Uh, you shooting. Um, is Gerald Green back? If Gerald Green is back, he gave. They were living by the jumper just a little too much. And I feel like in. The always overlooked what Golden State is that. In a seven-game series, they will demonstrate the ability to get to the cup and put that on the three. And I think when they play Golden State, Golden State will invite. They will make Houston play that much more defense as far as going to the paint and getting you in foul trouble too. Because even when Golden State wasn't hitting threes and they were hitting twos, it was bunches. Like, they would get stops. So it would go from eight straight points of twos to two quick threes behind. I keep making threes because CP3 can't get by his man. So when CP3... back off of CP3 and dare him to shoot. And then with Harden, they would just jump to that right shoulder. Because no, 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 I'm sorry. They make him go right, but they stay attached to that left shoulder. So if you, if you slide over to that block to where he can't see that opposite wing guy in the corner, Thing. His dominant hand can make that swing pass to the weak side or to the strong side. With their least dom dominant hand. And LeBron comes to mind. Like LeBron is really, people don't know LeBron is really. If he signed an autograph, he'll sign it with his right hand. He eat with his right hand. The only thing he do is play Which is why Golden State needed a score like KD. Threes. Yeah, Darian, that's true. And I feel like that's, and I feel like Westbrook provides that. A and Tony does not want mid range jumpers. So even though CP3 is a great mid range jumper, he's a great three point shooter when you compare him to Westbrook. Westbrook shot. Shot less than 30% last year from. He don't want mid-range jumpers. He does not want them. And he conceded to what CP3 brought to the table. He conceded that to CP3. So that's why I'm not worried about the fact that even Westbrook mid-range jumpers 
trash can juice either. So it's going to be interesting to see, man. Um, I like the move. I like the move. And I like what OKC, OKC doing. Like, blow everything up, get you some assets. You got 15 first-round picks now, total. You got eight first-round picks since the damn tra- – since the, since the draft. God damn, you got 15. Is there, was it 15 total picks or 15 – no, 15 first-round picks over these next coming years. 15. 15. I don't I, – I, and somebody if, – if, look, if, you, if you're if an NBA team and you trade for CP3, it's because he's the president of the Players Association. CP3 – oh, somebody asked me, do I feel bad for CP3? Meaning he an old head getting his money. And, and this is what they fought for, for dudes his age to still – Fought for, they fought for this. He was the first one to get it. And he died in the abyss. What? For what? Also, you got to start asking your questions. Brooke, about them being bad teammates. Are we going to discuss? You hear a lot of stories. We're going to talk about how Westbrook never, I mean, how, how CP3 never won. Mello, the same energy you get Westbrook. And, and yeah. You got to get this work that they get. Huh? Well, He got into it with Blake and then DeAndre out of here. He doesn't get into it with Harden. We not here with this trade. This trade is not even being discussed. This is You're not going to see Harden call Westbrook and be like, yo, fam. going to see Presty and them be able to make this move if the beef didn't yeah it was a domino effect everybody leaving OKC because it was bro if if everybody leaving because of somebody We'll give you first round picks for him since he's such a bad teammate because and wants him. And he's still in this prime. Melo going to OKC or Melo going to Houston. Past his prime. And you can't move and your body letting you down. This ain't CP3, you old. No, this is you still in your prime. You can defer, but we also need you to be and be. These are totally different situations than you saw with Melo and CP3. This I'm hyena. Still, that could get it in Westbrook. And I think it's going to mesh well in Houston. They're going to have some growing pains. Yes, they are. It's not going to be a match made in heaven from the jump, just like the, the Lakers are not going to be a match made in heaven from the jump, just like Butler in Chicago. Everything is going to take you this. After the Lakers and what they do was always. The Lakers and what LeBron and them do is going to be top billing all year. But. He 
Anytime Houston lose, they're going to put the camera on Westbrook and Harden. Just like they're going to do in L.A. with LeBron. They're going to blame what is Avery Bradley doing. Westbrook fault. So. Y'all know the motto. Good is the enemy of great. Be great in everything that you do. Appreciate everybody on Facebook that joined in. Um, hold on, hold on. Darren got something. Hold on. PG loves Westbrook. Katie and Russ were bros before he did what he did. Cantor and Adams love him. What you think about Billups' comments about Melo? All right, before I close up this, let me check my time right quick. See, all right, we're coming up on 40 minutes. All right, here we go. So, Chelsea Billups did an interview on Sirius Radio. I forgot what he did an interview, but he spoke candidly about Carmelo Anthony and his mindset. He basically said that Carmelo Anthony was a guy that took pride in scoring 30 points. Like, that was his goal. He wanted to get 30 points. He said that if Carmelo scored 25, anything less than 30, if the team won, Carmelo would be beside himself. He would be hard on himself. He would basically attack the gym like he had a bad game. If he hit 30 points and the team won, Melo would be picking everybody up like, Melo was too personally involved in scoring. To being a role playing guy because he's built on scoring. It does make a lot of sense. It's not necessarily dissing Melo. It's just showing that Melo. the mental makeup and how that affected him and how it just poured. So we can win and you felt like you didn't play good enough. Play great on defense, but you felt like if you don't score 30, you didn't play well. And some guys are. We, we, you know, just like being a defensive back, if you, if you play a corner, if you go the whole season and you don't give up a touchdown, but you ain't get no picks, you to show for it on like your trading card or your stats, unless somebody has. You didn't do well. Like, so just say if Melo averaged 25, 25 points in a season, right? 29 to 30. People will be like, well, Melo would have scored more than 25. His team probably got caught up in is that we don't allow some players to defer. box of being an offensive specialist so when he got put into that box he got his rebounds and points I just said for his career he averaged 17 points think about that I just threw that number out there to y'all 17 points 12 rebounds done that it's not a lot Tim Duncan even if dude can you can that his averages compete with that Kevin Durant does his averages compete with that all-time greats and people will be like the White House is not a first ballot Hall of Fame but you see Mello was 
gear. Because to be honest with you, that's all Melo was was scoring. We love AI because he was about a bucket. We love James Harden because he's about a bucket. Be like this for Westbrook next year. Westbrook is in the box of triple double. And they're going to hold that against them. So that's all I got for y'all, man. Good is the enemy of great. Be great in everything that you do, man. Um, it's a longer podcast than what I wanted, but I appreciate everybody that tuned in. Uh, y'all be easy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe more Anchor, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, whatever platform you listen to the show right now. It's the Ball Hawk, man. We out of here. Y'all be breezy. Get your set the hell up juice apparel at sthujuice.com. I'm out of here.